This is not a standard video about home assistant, sensors, plugs or even 3D printing. Today I'll show you how I spent last couple of weeks working with something I never worked before and that is a laser cutter and engraver. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Let me first start by saying thanks to Gearberry for sending me this laser for test review and to do vid on it. And no, Gearberry and Elgo Laser as a manufacturer didn't have any saying and everything I say in this video is based on my testing I've done in the last 3 weeks. But while this information about disclosure was important, next one is that serious. Lasers can be dangerous. They can hurt you, they can burn you and there is a lot of smoke. Not a healthy smoke. Always wear safety equipment, glasses are provided in the kit and operate laser in a well ventilated space. All of my testing was done outside on a balcony at around 0 degrees centigrade, which you also have to take into account. Safety glasses as I mentioned are important, but depending on the area where you work, I would also suggest quality respiratory mask, not the one that you have left over from the covid times. And third is announcement to YouTube channel members, to say thanks. All the channel members that were members on the 26th of December 2023 will receive a small gift from me. Engraved black aluminium card, with your months being a member, name and also your level. Just to say a thanks for all of your support. Now that this is out of the way, while we are watching unboxing and assembly, let me talk about the specs and why this laser may be considered bamboo lab style of laser as far as the lasers go. Working area of the laser is 440 by 450 mm, but overall size of the laser is 650 by 730 mm. It's a pretty large one. Power of the optical laser is 22 watts and overall power consumption or usage is around 144 watts, but it also depends on the laser power you are using. Maximum engraving speed according to documentation is 30 thousand millimeters per minute and the motion speed is 50,000 millimeters per minute. I've never used more than 15,000 millimeters for motion. From safety features it has active power out detection and protection, also laser overexposure time limit which should prevent fire, USB disconnect shutdown meaning that when the USB is disconnected it will shut down the laser, emergency stop button which is so nice gyro or tilt sensor that will be activated when there is a sudden motion or when you tilt the machine and also over temperature protection on the motherboard. Spot size or square size for the laser at 30% power is X0.06 mm by Y0.05 mm and at 100% power it is 0.16 by 0.14 mm. So it's a very tiny spot or dot or square in this case. The laser can be operated in three ways. By using the combo of touch screen on the device itself and the USB port where you just plug in the USB stick or use cable to connect it to the PC and control it from there. So you have option to use it independently of any PC where you transfer everything with the USB stick. Then you have option to use the cable to connect it to your PC. And the third option, if you set up the Wi-Fi, you can use Algo Laser mobile app to control it or you can of course hook it up via the network to your notebook or a PC. The last option is the option I use mostly, Wi-Fi connection to a PC or notebook. For engraving of course you need the software. There are two recommended ones, Lightburn that I ended up using and will buy a license for it as soon as the trial period expires and also the open source app called Laser GRBL or Gerbil. I'll not be going into details as I'm too much of a noob to do so for lasers, but one is free and the other one costs 55 euros for GRPL version. And that is sufficient for most of the lasers, but you do need to check out. As far as the Algo Laser Delta is concerned, you need the Gerbil version. You can do everything with laser GRPL, but you also get more bang for your money. And the finished product, finished lightburn product, looks much better than the laser GRPL, open source one. Ok, besides the laser device itself, I also bought something for it, a present, a Christmas present for my laser and that is the honeycomb. Honeycomb actually has two purposes and I did mention only one purpose in my last unboxing video, to protect whatever material is under the one you are cutting. 
because the lasers can go through material and you can burn the wood, the desk, but also tiles and marble floor, if you have a marble floor. So be careful what you or where you engrave. By using the honeycomb, you put distance between the material you are cutting and the actual floor or desk where the laser is located. And yes, all those honeycombs, or most of them, also have a thin sheet that goes underneath the honeycomb to protect whatever is under it. But also honeycomb is very important because it makes cut look more clean. Why? Because the smoke is not stuck under the material you are cutting, instead through honeycomb it can go out. And then you have much nicer or cleaner cuts and no smoke residue on the backside of your cut or print or engraved material, whatever. Second thing that is very important for clean cuts is also air pump for air assist. And that one is included with the Algo Laser Delta. But let's now jump into the cutting, cutting and just a bit of engraving. First, I've started with the paper material. Since it was near Christmas time, give tags were first thing to do. In Lightburn, I've first done a test print. To see what this material can do, we need to test the speed and power settings that should be used with it. For that, you just select test option in the light burn, frame it on the material you want to test it, and then click start. And after it is finished, it will tell you or show you in the material what speed and power you should use to cut through the material. Don't go for the maximum power, but you can mix the higher speeds with the higher power settings. Then I've started cutting and cutting and cutting, and I've cut more than hundreds of tags in different types of the paper or material, and I've given most of them away to my colleagues at work. This was a paper, so you can imagine the smoke from paper. But it's nothing compared to the next smoke. Next, I've tried to cut Christmas ornaments of this foamy-like plastic material with a thin paper backing. It did job really nice, although I could have lowered the power setting. But the smoke, the toxic smoke it admitted, was just terrible. It has nothing to do with the laser cutter itself, unfortunately this depends on the material you are using for the laser. The ornaments really do look nice, although you have to do a little bit of cleaning because that plastic did get stuck with the molted parts, so yeah, but still, after the cleaning everything looked really nice. Now time to play with the big guns. I, as a kid, always loved to assemble the air sea airplanes or gliders and I had a lot of them. So yeah, I went for the balsa. I've tested it with 2, 3 and 6 mm balsa wood. First again, I've tested the speed versus power test to see what to go with. Then I did two different cuts. One that requires you to use exacto knife or scalpel to finish taking the part out, while in the next one I increase power a bit so that parts are free to pop out. They didn't pop out automatically, but you can just push them and they would go out. Using X-Acto knife is what I usually had to do when buying those glider kits. So I also prefer that way, that you leave a bit uncut so you finish the cutting by your hand. Next came testing of two different types of wood. Poplar, which is Topola in creation, and Beach, which is Bukva in creation. As with all the new materials, first thing I did was test speed versus power. Yet, as I said, I was noob and I've been testing it for three weeks, but I've finally discovered that in Lightburn you can select settings for a test. Poplar or Topola is very bright or white wood, which you can see here because none of the text engraved on it. It did cut through, but yeah, I should have probably either increased the power or decreased the speed or use combo of both when doing settings for the text itself. And now for the final print that I want to show you. And yes, in this case, print is actually a good word. I decided to print an image, blueprint of a Star Trek on a beach wood. Looking at it, I could have reduced the speed just a bit or increased the power a bit more to get more darker colors. But still, in my humble opinion, this really looks good. So why did I say that Elga Laser Data is closest to Bambolau's printers you can get? because you only need to add few screws to assemble it. Print head, while it's not automatically calibrated, is very easily calibrated, with one hand. You can do it in just a couple of seconds. And while there is no AMS or MMU for multi-material, you can get upgrades for this Algo Laser Delta. For example, a rotary roller that allows you to engrave on bottles or other round materials, pencils or something like that. Also, if you put image on the USB stick, via the touchscreen you can easily preview it, 
prepare it, but also cut it or engrave it. It's very similar to how Bamboo Labs printers work. You can also do a lot more materials with it, much more than I showed in this video. For example, engraving on a stainless steel with a different power and speed will produce different colors for the engraving on this material. So you can even do color prints, which is really awesome for a laser printer or sorry, a laser cutter engraver. You can cut acrylics. According to documentation, 10 mm acrylic can be cut in one pass, clean pass. As you can see, you can do 30 mm pine wood in one pass, MDF 12 mm and 20 mm white oak. You can engrave on leather, acrylic, MDF, metal, even tiles, stone and as I mentioned some kind of uh, steel because by accident I engraved something yeah, that I shouldn't. No matter if you want to do personalized paper craft boxes from cardboard, engrave keychains, water bottles, do your own coasters, tags, RC models, Algo Laser Data will make it easy for you. And don't worry, I have zero sense of design. There is a learning curve for the software, but there is always a learning curve. And if I could do it, then you could do it too. And if you are not a graphic designer, there are tons of sites. Some are commercial ones that I've got subscription to, but also there are sites that provide you with free PDF or SVG files that you can do for both commercial, but check out if the license provides you commercial or non-commercial use. So if you want to start your crafting business, if you just want to create something for your family, if you are into gliders, RC airplanes, or the wooden boat models, Elgo Laser Data is a great tool for you. If you did like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, because it not just means a lot to me, because I spent a lot of time in testing, testing, learning and testing this laser, but it also tells YouTube that the video was good and that more people should see it. If you do have any kind of a comment or a question, pop it down in a comment section below. Or you can also ask questions on my Twitter or Discord server. And before I wrap up the video, I want to say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, subscribed, commented or shared my videos. I really do appreciate all of the interactions. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. But let's not forget super thanks. If you get me super thanks, I will be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.